Today's Tips to Jour mailbag question comes to us from Nebraska. Robert, I recently purchased some Koa that is a smaller dimension, not large enough to make an OM guitar. I was wanting to do a three-piece back, but haven't been able to find any information on its construction. Do you have any insight on this? Michael in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, Michael, yes. Three-piece back is one possibility, and there's several ways of doing it. Let's go over the bench, and I'll show you how I do it. So here's a set of beautiful African blackwood that I just got from LMI. I'm working on a classical guitar. I knew that it was going to be a three-piece back. However, if you wanted to do a two-piece, here's how you could do that. Take two pieces, join the center seam, place your pattern on it. There's always some excess here in the waist area. So when you cut this out, take these two pieces, flip them around, and glue them on here. And you now have a four-piece back in essence, but it looks like it's just two halves because this will match perfectly if done properly. So that's the first way that you could use a set of wood that's too small for your pattern. Another way would be to just join the three pieces together. Then when you place your pattern on there, go ahead and cut it out as you normally would. And you have a couple of seams in there. Nobody will ever notice if done properly, especially for these darker colored woods. Probably the most common way of doing a three piece back is to make a wedge shape out of the center piece. Now you could use the same species of wood, like the African black wood, put it in there, and if done properly, you would probably not even see that. However, if you want to add some, some character to your guitar, perhaps call attention to what you're doing here, you can add contrasting pieces of wood for your wedge. For example, a piece of rosewood or even really extreme would be to put a lighter colored wood in there, like a piece of flame maple or quilted maple or something. And that makes a very interesting uh, wedge or three-piece guitar that would really call attention to your instrument. And you could do some decorative stuff like on your end wedge to match the wedge in the back and stuff. However, another way would be to use the same species of wood. And when you join it, just put a, a piece of purfling or something in there that would match your uh, binding purflings. And you could do it like this, with a piece on each side here, or you could do that wedge and then put a piece of purfling on either side like that. And I think that's what I'm gonna do because on this guitar I could get really fancy with all of my binding and purflings coming around and tie them all in together with the wedge and with the end wedge here. I think it'd be really sharp looking. So that's what I'm gonna do. And let me show you how I do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out which piece I want in the middle. And I think the way I have it oriented here is probably going to be the best way. And then place these on here and figure out how large of a wedge I want. You can make it very large, you can make it a little narrower. Uh, you may be locked into what you have to do depending on what size instrument you're wanting to make. I think I'm going to go with a little narrow piece there, but I need to have enough to make sure it's going to fit my pattern here. So just open it up until it fits your pattern. Also, you need to decide how far you want your pattern to go one way or the other. Do you want it to come to a point up here? Or do you want it to have very wide back here? Do you want it to match your end wedge? All of that can be determined when you do the design of the instrument. And I'm thinking this is going to have to be a fairly large wedge. So I'm thinking something about like that. I'll have to do it. And so now I'm just going to take my pencil that way I know after I join it how I want to use it. And then come in and mark it here. And mark it here. Now I get to go to work with the joinery. That means using my bandsaw on this piece, get it close and use my shooting board. Same thing here. Probably use my joiner here and then my shooting board and hand plane to get all this trued up and make it fit the way I want it. So here's what I've got after milling, and that's going to come together really nicely. And the good news is that the extra pieces you have, if you like what you get when you're in result here, you can do it a couple more times because you have leftovers. So now I'm going to take my plane and my shooting board 
and just true up that edge. And you're going to do that on the other side as well. You also want to do it on the two pieces of back. And what I usually do is I place one off the edge of the shooting board here about a quarter inch, get this one up close to it, and lean on it. Occasionally you have some cupping going on, so if you lean on it, that helps keep this side perpendicular to your hand plane. Once you get one side done, roll it over to the other side, and rinse and repeat. After you've spent some quality time with your hand plane, check your work by just placing it together like this and looking at your center seam. You can also hold it up to a light source like a window or an overhead shop light or something to check and see if there's any daylight in there. Make sure that all your joinery looks good. Now, depending on whether or not you've been living right, driving the speed limit, paying your taxes on time, that goes very quick. If not, you may have to walk away and come back after a cup of coffee or something. But don't try and join these until all the joinery looks good. Here's a little tip for you if you're having trouble with the hand plane or if you don't have a hand plane. I got these precision bars from LMI and they're ground flat within just a few thousandths on each edge. You can just glue some sandpaper to it and come in and work the joint that way. And that works really well for fine tuning that joint. So here's my three pieces of African black wood. I've worked the seams there. And once I put in a nice piece of white maple in between the joinery there, it's really gonna dress it up. So let's join it together. So to join the pieces together, I'm using my LMI plate joining jig. I'm just gonna stuff the maple purfling strips in there as I go. And I'm using LMI instrument maker glue for the adhesive. Now, if you've never used the LMI plate joining jig, it's a really slick way of joining your tops and your backs. You just wrap your rope around it like this. Now, this grid that you place in top is maintaining your alignment this way, and then you place these little wedges in here, and this applies your lateral pressure to clamp everything. There we go. Dry time. After appropriate cure time, you can remove the back from the jig. And now, clean up your joint. So now I've got the back all cleaned up. I've retraced my pattern on here. The only other thing left to do now is put the center reinforcement strip on there. If it were just a single seam, then I would use one. Since I have two seams, I'll place one here and then I'll place one here. Now the back is ready to work. So Michael in Omaha, thank you very much for your question and happy building. Mm -hmm.